She and I have never really met, certainly never spoken to each other, despite being in this house together for seven years. We have some things in common, not much. We were both born in 1980, although I'm older and wiser than she is. <laughs> People often think we're both much younger than we really are, because we've got such great skin and good hair. <laughs> and we're both known as being quite feisty. So I'm really pleased to be able to congratulate her on her elevation to Secretary of State and Deputy Prime Minister. This is a phenomenal achievement. She will be a great inspiration to young people, but particularly young women in many communities across the country. And I think that's a wonderful thing. That's the sort of Britain we are, where people who grow up from all walks of life can reach the top. It's an extraordinary story, dare I say, of conservative success. <laughs> because unlike me, she grew up under a conservative government with a welfare state that provided a safety net, a strong economy and opportunity. While I mostly grew up in Nigeria under a socialist military government that used a lot of the rhetoric that I've heard her promote when she was sitting on this side of the house. So she may not credit conservatives for what she has achieved, but we'll be taking some of that credit anyway. So I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to her on her first outing as a minister in the chamber, because it's only going to be downhill from here. You see, the thing is, I've been a Secretary of State before, and after five years as a minister, you learn a thing or two about government that you never can in opposition. I've been there, done it, and I can tell the right honourable lady that she has been stitched up. <laughs> it is quite clear that the bills and policies from the King's speech she's just referenced have not been written by her, but by the Chancellor and the Chancellor's advisers. We all know this because we watched the member for Leeds West announce them in far more detail in her speech last week. And all the stuff the Secretary of State worked on in opposition, like her new deal for workers, has been taken off her and given to the Business Secretary. So I'm sorry to tell the Right Honourable Lady that her colleagues, the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, and their many advisers have written a manifesto and made promises that are not deliverable and they've hung them around her neck and said, Angie, you go out there and you sell it. <laughs> I'm sad to see many of her shadow team not sitting beside her as ministers. They worked for free, grinding in opposition for years, only to watch the children of the chosen ones get the ministerial cars yeah, yeah, yeah. and salaries before their maiden speeches yeah. are written. Wow. Golden tickets. Sue Gray was a lot nicer to me when she worked in my department. <laughs> I think we know who's in charge, and it's not the right honourable lady. She's been stitched up. They've made her the fall guy. They've promised one and a half million houses by the end of this parliament. That's over 800 houses per day, and we're already two weeks in. And as she goes on, day after day, she's going to realise that a backlog is building and there's no way out. But I want her to know that I'm here for her. <laughs> I'll be here to hold her hand and walk her through what is likely to be a very difficult time I may even give her some tips, because having worked in that department, I know what needs to be done. I know what we should have done that we didn't do, and I know that they're going to make the same mistakes. It's not that one and a half million homes by the end of this parliament is unachievable. It's that it's going to require the sort of systemic change which they are not ready for. I know they're not ready because of how they voted in the last parliament and how they campaigned in their own constituencies. I'm not going to read out the long list of all the cabinet members who've been opposing planning in their backyard, including the housing minister. Many of them have been thinking that they get into government and concrete over lots of Tory constituencies. Three weeks ago, just 15% of the Green Belt was in Labour constituencies. Now it's 50%. They aren't Tory constituencies now, they are Labour. So Mr. Deputy Speaker, I would say, yes, they are Labour. They are Labour. I would say to members opposite, they are now your voters and your electorate, and you're going to have to tell them that you're going to do something that many of you promised locally that you would never do not that long ago. But it mostly won't be the problem of the Cabinet who will look after themselves. It'll be the backbenchers, all those bright, shiny faces I see sitting behind the Right Honourable Lady who are really excited to be here. They haven't started getting those angry emails we've been replying to for 14 years. Many of those voters, many of those voters on whom their narrow and slim majorities now rely, uh, will be writing to them. So in the spirit of sisterly report, uh, support, I'm going to let her know 
what's going to happen over the next few weeks and months. And they're looking so nervous right now, I can tell. Um, they look very nervous. Let me tell the right honourable lady, she's going to get a period of consultation that's going to take this long, and then she's going to have to respond to that consultation, and that'll take this long, assuming that nothing goes wrong with either of those processes. So we reached December, January, six months have passed, and that is 10% of the parliament where well, you haven't built any extra homes. So at this point, she'll be running 500 homes behind the target every single day, and they wouldn't have started building properly. The honourable, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the honourable gentleman is trunching from a sedentary position that you wait and see. We have seen, we've been there. We know you don't. <laughs> And as it becomes clear in these new Labour constituencies, for which congratulations, these new Labour constituencies in the Green Belt, as it becomes clear to their voters what's happening, those MPs are going to receive a lot more emails. I mean a lot more. They're going to want a lot of public meetings because they will know that the decisions which she announced are now being taken out of local hands and made by central government. And the only way that they can register their concern is by appealing to their local MPs who will all be appealing to her. But this is what being in power is. Government is about making difficult decisions. Opposition is easy. We've been watching Labour do it for 14 years. And they have spent all the time telling the people of this country that they will do better. So here's the record that they are going to have to beat. We built a million new homes in the course of the last parliament while safeguarding the Green Belt. Two and a half million since 2010, despite COVID. We delivered 700,000 new affordable homes. Over 172,000 of those were for social rent. We put in place £11.5 billion pound, uh, affordable homes programme. Does she even know yet if the Chancellor will give her up to £11.5 billion? Because she's going to need a lot more than that if she's going to beat our record. And let's not forget what Labour did just last year. We had a majority in this House, but not in the other place, where they whipped Labour Lords to vote against an amendment on nutrient neutrality, yeah. using yeah. new Brexit powers to unlock 160,000 homes. Many of those new members didn't see that happening. They're going to find it shocking. We legislated for that. They blocked it. Destructive opposition. Are they going to reverse that decision? I have a feeling they won't. And that's why I'm worried about the right honourable lady. Is she going to be able to face down her backbenchers, or will Labour carry on not doing the things that you have to do in order to build homes? More. Let's, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> let's look at the. Let's look at the. Let's look at the Labour record. In the year to June 2009, she talks about what happened at the last uh, World War. In the year to June 2009, when everybody here was alive, when they were last in government, they only built 75,000 new homes, the lowest level of house building since the 1920s. And what are they going to do? What are they, what are they doing where they currently are in government? In London, Sadiq Khan has failed to hit his own target, beginning just 20, 21,000 new homes in 2022, despite us giving him pots and pots of money. We were forced to intervene on his house building failures. Why hasn't he built on all those car parks that she was talking about in her speech? In Wales, the Labour administration promised to deliver 20,000 new homes for social by 2026. They've barely delivered a quarter. Mm -hmm. The Royal Honourable Lady may pretend building homes is easy, but Labour know it's not easy because they failed in London and they failed in Wales and they are already making new mistakes. We all know that immigration increases housing demand. Just this week, we heard that they're going to be fast-tracking 90,000 illegal immigrants who already landed here. If they are permitted to stay, they will require permanent housing. We put the Rwanda scheme in place to limit illegal immigration. They scrapped it. So with no plans f f whatsoever to tackle the problem, has she got 90,000 homes ready for the people her Home Secretary is going to be fast-tracking through? If not, she's already 90,000 homes down on the target the Prime Minister has set for her. So that's why I'm feeling very generous towards the Right Honourable Lady, because she has been stitched up, she's going to need some friends, and I want her to know that we're all here for her. <laughs> some people think opposition is about some people think opposition is about throwing mud across the chamber or calling your opponent scum but often it's about saying, saying i told you so and i want to reassure the right honorable lady that i will be here to say i told you so when these targets are missed we of course will be a constructive opposition we want to see home bits built in the right places with the right infrastructure we are here to help 
I doubt the same can be said of the biggest local NIMBYs in the country, the Liberal Democrats. I'm not sure if they're there or not. There are many more of them now, you wouldn't know, but there are usually elected on promises not to build anything anywhere in their communities. In the last parliament, I watched them oppose planning reforms on permitted development, reforms that have allowed us to build on land that was already in use. It will be very interesting to see how they square their NIMBY tendencies with their manifesto promises. But then again, saying one thing and doing another has never bothered the Liberal Democrats. She's not going to get any help from them, but we're here for her. <laughs> I've heard some of Labour's plans. Introducing mandatory targets while uh, introducing new regulatory costs won't work. Without taxpayer funding, their affordable housing targets are unviable. Where's that money going to come from? The mandate they want to enforce implies a consequence for missing the target. What will that consequence be for local councils? Are they going to scrap neighbourhood plans that communities have put together to deliver more homes, as my uh, honourable friend said? What will those councils say when they're forced to do things they promised they wouldn't do just eight weeks ago? So we've heard and, uh, from, from Labour in the speeches that have been given that they will bring in those mechanisms for overriding local decision-making to identify the land for development. That's fine. But identifying land doesn't mean that homes or infrastructures will be built. So I look forward to second reading of her bill, where she will have to explain the plan, plans that the Chancellor and her spads have written up for the Right Honourable Lady, and she can tell us in great technical detail how they will be delivered, although I suspect she will leave the tricky stuff to her junior ministers. So we Conservatives may not be as many as we used to be, but we still know all the stuff that we learned over 14 years as we delivered two and a half million homes. We know where the difficulties are, we know the technicalities. She is just learning, and we're going to be ready and waiting to show that she and her party have made promises they cannot keep, and in many cases have no idea what they are doing. To conclude, Mr Deputy Speaker, Labour have a tough act to follow, but imitation is the sincerest. They do. They do, but imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and I'm pleased to see that they have been copying and pasting many of the policies that we had in government. They have been copying and pasting what we do. We introduced Metro Mayors with substantial powers. Now they're announcing they're going to do more. We put billions of levelling up funding into communities, backing Metro Mayors like Ben Hart, and let's see if Labour will follow this for all their new mayors. In the last local government finance settlement, we made £64.7 billion available for local authorities, a 7.5% increase in cash terms. Let's see if Labour tops that, rather than just moving money from one part of the country to another. We would like to see them get the Holocaust Memorial Bill, which we started, onto the statute books, as the Prime Minister promised. We will support them in that. We must do right by our Jewish communities. We provided record levels of funding to protect them from harm and extremism. We took decisive action to tackle growing sectarianism and are disappointed not to see any mention of how Labour will continue this in the King's speech. Mm -hmm. This election, we saw independent MPs win seats off Labour on the back of sectarianism and integration failures, a problem Labour continually denies exists even as we are watching riots in Leeds. It is time to put the childish displays and fake outrage that they have been showing away. The Right Honourable Lady will need to get very serious very quickly, and where she has the right ambition, we will do what we can to support her in facing down those members sitting behind her who still don't get it. Yeah.